When you look at other large Central European cities like Vienna, Austria or Bratislava, Slovakia, you can see a clear trend. Pedestrianization of city centers and other prominent streets, the encouragement of walking, cycling and public transport over cars, etc. One prominent outlier in this trend is my home city of Prague, Czech Republic. Instead of moving to make the city more livable, its air cleaner, its streets safer and quieter, we seem to be moving in the opposite direction. In this video, we'll take a look at some car brain policies that affect Prague. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. Finding a parking spot in Prague has always been difficult. The city leadership took a long, big look at this problem and thought really hard about it. There are a few potential solutions, most notably, expanding and improving public transport service, encouraging cycling and walking by building infrastructure like bike lanes, raised crossings for pedestrians, etc. Instead of that, the head honchos of a lot of Prague's districts decided to take space from pedestrians and turn it into more parking spots. For example, here's one case of this happening in the Prague district of Nusle. The district government decided to cut into the sidewalk to create a few new parking spaces. Thankfully, the residents sued, citing the district government's lack of consultation with the residents, and the court agreed. The court ruled that the district government has to either get rid of these parking spots or actually consult their creation with the residents. So far, as of early September 2024, the parking spots are still there, reducing the pedestrian space by about one half. This statement by a resident of the street the new parking spaces are on caught my interest. They said, quote, I'm glad the court agreed that the city hall's approach was illegal and cancelled it. In these situations, the city hall has to acknowledge the input of citizens. We consider this important because the majority of the street's residents doesn't own a car or doesn't use paid on street parking. Meanwhile, we all use the sidewalk in front of our homes." Unquote. I think this point is important. In my opinion, public space should be utilized efficiently. After all, space in cities is extremely limited. The city wanted to take well-utilized sidewalk space from local residents to fit 8 or 9 more cars of people who probably can't even name the street's name. In many parts of Prague, driving a car is a choice. You definitely don't need to drive to get to most places in a decently fast way. Not in all places, of course. Some places are genuinely in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, and getting to places quickly by transit would take a long time. But for a lot of Prague, this isn't the case. In my opinion, the solution isn't to dig up sidewalks or paint lines on them and let them be taken over by cars. It's to properly invest in public transport service, park and rides, bike and pedestrian infrastructure, stuff like that. It unfortunately doesn't end there. Next up, Prague's Old Town, a place with over a thousand years of history, gorgeous architecture, little narrow winding streets to get lost in, and cars. In most places, with the exception of a few streets, even the historical center of Prague is not free from personal cars. I understand restocking vehicles having to go to all the shops, emergency services, disabled people who need cars to get to places, and I could even understand able-bodied residents being given access, even though you really don't need a car when living there. But why is the place still open for pretty much anyone to drive into? A proposal has been made to charge a 200 crown or 8 euro fee for entering a part of the historical Malastrana district for non-residents, which is near the Prague castle. This charge would only affect people who don't live there or who don't run businesses there. Of course, their reaction was exactly what you'd expect, with people complaining about taking away freedom and stuff. Other cities, like Vienna, Bratislava or even Brno in the Czech Republic have mostly closed their city centers to private cars and no supposed traffic or societal collapse happened. And trust me, the Austrians, Slovaks or the people of Brno are not some freedom-hating communists. So I have no idea why we can't do the same. Meanwhile, historical streets continue to be lined with cars, with pedestrians, including the millions of tourists that come to visit the city and the old town each year, having to squeeze onto narrow sidewalks. 
Even a place like Malostranské náměstí, right under the Prague castle itself, is a glorified parking lot, at least on its western half. I'd argue that this centuries-old historical district could be used a bit better than to store cars. There's also the matter of closing a part of the riverside to cars. This is Smetanovo nábreží, a street directly on the right bank of the Vltava river. There have been discussions and even pilot tests of closing this street to cars and letting it be fully dedicated to public transport, walking and cycling. In 2013 and during COVID, parts of the street have been closed to cars at select times, allowing the street to be fully utilized by pedestrians, cyclists and public transport. The street got more lively, as it wasn't dangerous to exist on most of the street anymore, and no traffic collapse happened. After these tests were done, the changes were reverted, and now Smetarovo Nabrzeži is full of cars again. However, very, very slow progress is being made. For example, there is this dedicated bike lane starting roughly at the National Theatre. This would have been great, but there's one small issue. A few hundred meters later, the bike lane stops and you're dumped straight into car traffic again. I believe this is the problem with Prague's bike infrastructure. It's extremely limited, and in places where it does exist, it's simply a bolted-on solution in a limited area, like literally on one street. I think that if there was a network of safe cycling paths, way more people would cycle, especially those that don't have a death wish. I'm a fan of putting my money where my mouth is, and so, I cycle in Prague quite frequently. When it's not raining, I usually get a bike-sharing bike and get to university that way. During my regular, roughly 20-minute ride to university, I encounter exactly zero dedicated bike infrastructure, with my only protection being paint on the roads. I can't blame anyone for not wanting to cycle next to cars when the infrastructure looks like this. One criticism of implementing bike infrastructure in Prague is that the city is too hilly. While yes, some parts of Prague are definitely on the hillier side, in my opinion, that is not a valid reason for completely shunning cycling. There's a term in transit planning called catchment area, basically showing the area served by a transit stop. If the catchment area only includes walking, the area covered by that public transport stop is small, because walking is quite a slow mode of travel. The distance covered by a 5 to 10 minute walk is really not that long. On the other hand, if a city provides adequate bicycle infrastructure, the catchment area of a stop increases significantly. The Netherlands is well known in the urbanist community for integrating cycling into the catchment area of train stations, and I would say that it's working pretty well for them. Some metro stations here in Prague have started building these little lockable sheds for bicycles, but again, we run into the problem of the lack of cycling infrastructure to actually get to the station in the first place. We can build all the bike parking we can, but when the vast majority of people are scared of getting run over by a car on the way there, it won't be utilized very well. Integrating cycling into other transit modes, such as trains, metros, trams, etc., could be a viable solution even for cities with more diverse terrain. If your city's public transport infrastructure is good enough, chances are that you have a stop pretty close to your house. If that stop is too far for walking, but within a 5-10 to 10 minute bike ride, I would say that that's an ideal distance for cycling. Originally, this was supposed to be the end of the video, but just as I was finishing writing this script, I was invited to a discussion panel about micromobility here in Prague as an audience member. Naturally, I went there. The guests were a who's who of Czechia's top dogs of shared mobility and micromobility such as the founders of both Czech bike sharing services, the general manager for micromobility for Bolt, a higher up from the car sharing service car for way and more. There were even supposed to be two people from the city government, notably the deputy mayor for transport Zdeněk Hřib, but they couldn't make it because they had work meetings. The topics discussed were about micro and shared mobility and how it could be integrated into Prague's transport infrastructure. There were multiple approaches discussed. For example, the representative from Operator ICT, the company developing IT solutions for Prague, notably the Pit Litečka public transport app, discussed the push to turn the app from just a regular public transport timetable app to a some sort of transport super app for Prague and its surrounding regions. 
In the future, you would be able to find the fastest, most climate-friendly and cheapest option of getting to your destination using a variety of modes, including bike and car sharing, all in the app. You would be able to buy your transit ticket or pay for parking through the app. Basically, everything for your Prague and surrounding region travel needs could be sorted through one app. I think this vision is incredible and I hope that it'll be implemented. Next, the founders of bike sharing services talked about the need for actual, separated bike infrastructure in order for people to want to cycle more. Examples from the city of Tallinn, Estonia were shown and proposals for how it could be done were discussed. Overall, I agree with their arguments. Lots of people are scared to cycle in Prague precisely because of the cars and the lack of infrastructure. To be completely honest, it would be extremely politically unpopular in today's car-brained landscape of Prague. I mean, many people in the comments will probably call me a cyclo-fascist or something, so there's that. But I hope that we'll live long enough to see it. Various mobility-as-a-service solutions were discussed, like on-demand public transport that you could book in the Pidlitačka app. This solution is being tested in the central bohemian city of Český Brod. Let me know if you'd like to see a video about it. Overall, I found this discussion panel incredibly interesting. It's clear that the transport solutions for a more sustainable, human and environmentally friendly Prague are in the works, but progress is being held back by the political climate. Let's hope that someday we will actually be able to propose traffic calming a street without being called a cyclo-fascist. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with three membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell and Arrow Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramley and I'll see you next time, bye! I think this point is important. In my opinion, public <coughs> such as the founders of both Czech bike sharing services, the general manager for <coughs> speaking English is hard, come on, huh? Discussed the drive to <coughs> bro, bro.